to here before somewhere. Under here. No. I've got oh. it. The sticky paper you wanted. Oh, great. Have you seen my shears? On the side of your head. No, not my ears, my shears. Oh. Scissors for cutting paper. Oh, I know where they are. I'll go and get them. Oh. What's today's show about? Oh, it's a great show. It's yeah. about hobbies and pastimes. Oh. Yeah, things like Japanese paper folding and stamp collecting, autograph collecting, the lot. Oh, folding Japanese stamp collecting autograph hunters. <laughs> Can I have a go? If you like. It's simple enough. Oh. Give me that paper. You go and get me scissors. Cheers. And welcome to Chuckle Vision. We've got a great show for you today. It's all about hobbies, interests and pastimes. And where better to start than origami, the art of Japanese paper folding. We're going to make an aeroplane. We can't. Why not? Impossible. No, it's not. The Japanese have been practising this art for years. How many years? Oh, hundreds. They've been practising for hundreds of years? Mm. They should be perfect by now, then. Yeah, they are. Now, origami or Japanese paper folding. You can't do it. Why not? You haven't got any Japanese folding paper. Oh, no. Still. A good hobbyist can turn his hand to anything. So for this demonstration, we'll use ordinary paper. Hey, <laughs> Here, can you take that off me, while? Yes. In the meantime, here's a special Chucklevision report on model railways. As you can see, railway modelling enthusiasts take great care to get every detail perfect. Here we are, beside the biggest model railway in the world. And I'm sure you'll agree, it's very realistic. Very realistic. It is, isn't it? Yeah. It's hard to imagine that everything around here is a fully working scale model. Even the people are battery-operated. Are you sure about this? Yeah. And this railway was invented by George Stevenson. Hang on a minute. Didn't he write Treasure Island? No, that was Robinson Crusoe. Oh, yeah, of course it was. Of course it was. Right. Where was I? Down here. Oh, yes. Now for an overhead view and then back to the studio. Pretty good, I think you'll agree. But while you've been away, we've gotten a lot quicker than we anticipated. In fact, we have now completed the paper folding section of the show. And over here, we have the finished article. A perfect model of an aer... of a table. Hey. <laughs> yes. Tell you what, I like the legs the best. Yeah, very much like Queen Anne's. No wonder she wore a long dress. Uh, now it's over to armchair theatre. Hey, I think I got out of that pretty well. You did? Yes. Hey, by the way, I thought I'd sent you down to get some more paper from the paper shop. You did, but it wasn't there anymore. What, closed down? No, blown away. Oh, dear. Well, we'll just have to move on to the next item, won't we? Yeah. Oh, that was quick. Well, moving along, we have... Each weekend during the holidays, Gary would get on his bike and cycle over to his granddad's house on the other side of town. One day, over a bit of lunch, Grandad suddenly opened his mouth and yawned. Joseph, not at the table, please. Oh, excuse me, I've been up since half past five. Every morning since we sold the farm, I wake up at half past five to milk the cows. But there's no cows to milk. At midday, I go out to feed the sheep. But there's no sheep to feed. It's a rum do. You know what you need, Grandad? A hobby. The boy's got a point, Joseph. Look at me and my hobbies. Mondays, I deliver meals on wheels. Tuesday, I go to the Mother's Union. Wednesdays, I clean the church brasses. Thursday, I do my shopping. And Fridays, I do my baking. But, no buts. Gary, you make sure your granddad's got a hobby before I get back from the mother's union. And off went Gary's gran. 
What hobbies have you got, Gary? You know, video games and American football. I don't think they're my kind of hobbies somehow. What about stamp collecting? You know the most boring thing I had to do when I was a boy? Cleaning your bedroom. Collecting blooming stamps. It doesn't have to be stamps. If it's a hobby, you can collect anything. And when Gary's grand returned from the mother's union, he told her all about Grandad's new hobby, collecting. Hmm. Collecting what, may I ask? Have a look in the dining room. Gary's grand peered round the dining room door. Suffering ice cakes. This afternoon, Gary and I have been round all the junk shops in town and collected all this stuff. And three tin baths, 11 walking sticks, and a pram with three wheels. Over the next few weeks, Gary and his granddad visited all the junk shops, buying whatever took his granddad's fancy. Gary, won't you tell him? If he's going to collect something, it's got to be something that particularly fascinates him, like clocks, or pots, or stamps. But when Gary approached his granddad, he said, Well, I want to know if it fascinates me, till I bring it home and start collecting it. Very soon, the house was piled up with Gary's granddad's collection, and Gary could see there was going to be trouble. And there was. One Friday, Gary's grandma opened the oven door to pop in a tray of chocolate brownies. <coughs> and it took a lot to make Gary's grandma scream. That does it! There are five headless garden gnomes in my oven. Well, I thought I could collect. Over my dead body! I want the lawnmower, the lavatory seats and the gnomes out of the lounge. The bagpipes and car batteries out of the bathroom. And the 16 vacuum cleaners out of the hall. And any other rubbish away by next week. Then I want the whole place spring cleaned. Well, what about my hobby? If you want to collect something, you collect one thing and one thing only. Such as stamps. And as he loaded everything into the boxes, waiting for the van to arrive, Gary's granddad sighed. No, I don't know what to collect. Leave the vacuum cleaners, Gary. They'll come in useful for spring cleaning the house. Gary's granddad picked up a vacuum cleaner and looked at it carefully. Fascinating thing, vacuum cleaners. Granddad, if you find vacuum cleaners so interesting, why don't you collect them? Later that week, when Gary popped round on his bike, he found the house spick and span and six more vacuum cleaners in the hall. His granddad was reading a very large book which was called The Concise History of Vacuum Cleaners, Volume 1. He's a changed man. It's also a changed house. It gets cleaned every day. Fascinating things, vacuum cleaners. You ought to start collecting something, you know. I have. Oh, what's that? Stamps. Ah, welcome back. Well, here's a short visual clue to our next item. <coughs> yes, aero modelling. Surely there can't be a better feeling in the world than seeing a model you've made yourself flying in the skies. We went out the other day with a model aeroplane, and this is what happened. <coughs> What a marvellous sight. And to think that aeroplane up there is controlled by this little box down here. <laughs> oh, there you are. Where have you been? The demonstration's nearly over. I've been getting the aeroplane. Not that kind of aeroplane. It's a demonstration of radio control. Oh. Can you get Radio 1 on that, then? No. This little box, it controls the aeroplane up there. Does it? Yeah. Can I have a go? Oh, no, no. With this, you've got to be very, very careful. Go on, let me have a go. No, no, you can't. Go on. No, no, you've got to be careful. Please. Oh, go on then, but be very, very careful. Won't okay, you? I'll be very careful. Oh! oh. Right. How's it work? Well, it's simple, really. You play with these little knobs here, yeah. and it controls the aeroplane. Oh! <laughs> what aeroplane? That aeroplane. Now you've done it. Well, as you can see, flying model aircraft can be very expensive, but you can take to the skies a lot cheaper if you take up flying kites. Oh, you should get that. Right, go on. 
I said, go on, get, get, get back there. Hey. Right, now, what we're going to do... Yeah. Right, I want you to back off as far as you can go. Right. When I tell you to stop, then you can launch it and we'll get it flying. OK. OK, right, go on, back off. Back off, right. Go on, that's it. I'm going. Go on, take up the slack. OK. Go on, back I'm off. Going. OK. That's it, keep going. I'm going! Go on. Oh. Oh. No, no, no. You haven't got it at all, have you? No. Look, i tell you what. Yeah? I'll launch it, you take that end and run with it when I tell you to go. OK. Right, we'll get right up in the air this time. Just a minute. I'm going to put my goggles down. Get your goggles down. You ready? Now, when I tell you, you start running. You ready? OK. Right. Go. Right, here we go. Hey, it's up. It's no, up. No. Oh. <laughs> As you can see, kite flying can be very rewarding. We've been here all day now, but some people prefer marine models. So let's go over to the lake where the McTuckle brothers are waiting to show you something very interesting. Hey, Paul, can you give us a hand now, please? I remote. Remote. I remote. I am here with you. They're Drake's. Well, it doesn't matter. You can have them back after the show. Oh. Now. A lot of people like to make static models. Do they? Yes. Oh. They like to make copies of famous buildings. Now, this dates back to the days of James I, when a group of people got together and made an inflatable model of the Houses of Parliament. Hey, I've heard about that. Have you? They wouldn't let Guy Fawkes join. Why not? He wanted to blow it up. Oh. Now, you can make models out of bread. That's using your loaf. Yes. And one famous Italian modelist made this, the Leaning Tower of Pizzas. Hey, it's very nice, isn't it? It is very nice, yes. Yeah. Now, don't worry if you can't get the raw materials. You can use cooked ones. Exactly, yes. Yeah. Or you could use paper mache. What's paper mache? It's wet paper. Is it? How do you do that, then? Oh, it's dead easy. Is now, it? first thing you do is you get some paper. Yes. Right? Yes. Then you tear it into strips. Yes. Like that, right? Yes. Then you get a bucket. Yes. Right? Then you put all the paper in the bucket. Yes, yes, yes. Yes. And then... And yes? You wet it. And then what? Nothing. That's it. It goes into a soggy mess, and then when it's dried out, it goes into a hard lump. Oh. Look, here's one I prepared earlier. There you are. A perfect model of a bucket. <laughs> oh. A lot of people's hobbies revolve around collecting things, such as postcard collecting, jam jar collecting, coin collecting... Stamp collecting. Yes, yeah, stamp collecting. I collect stamps, you know. Do you? Yeah, I've got one that's worth a thousand pounds. A thousand pounds? Yeah. How much did you pay for it? A thousand pounds. Oh, you got it at an auction? No, I had to bid for it. Oh, I say, you're a philatelist. I'm not. No, a philatelist is another name for a stamp collector. Philately will get you nowhere. Yeah. Do you know another name for a coin collector? Yes. What? A miser. Ah, good. I didn't think you'd get that. No. Now, another pastime you might like to try is autograph hunting. And here are a few tips. There they are. Hey, 35p. Not bad. Not bad. Yes, autograph hunting is not always that easy, because a lot of stars like to travel incognito. Or in a bus. Oh, in disguise. Oh, in an aeroplane. Come with us down the road and we'll show you how to go about it. And we better wrap up. It's a bit cold outside and windy. Right. <laughs> what are you laughing at? Nothing. Oh. Okay. Hey. Oh. Yes, brilliant. Oh, look. Stage door. Stage door. Hey. Hey. Now, inside this theatre is a famous pop group currently rehearsing for their next world tour. With a long list of hit records behind them, they're also famous for going to extraordinary lengths to avoid their mobbing fans. They have amazing disguises. We're talking, of course, about Bross. Bross? Yes. Now, Barry is going to go inside, see through the disguises and get their autographs. Am I? Yeah, well, you can't expect me to do it, can you? Why not? Well, they'd recognise me straight away. Would they? They're my biggest fans, didn't you know? I wouldn't know that. Now, the first thing you have to do is get past the stage doorman. Ah. Ah, you're in luck. He's asleep. Oh, a doorman, doorman. Yes. In you go. The secret of this is timing. You have to be in and out in a flash. 
I've got it. Oh, good. Let's have a look. I saw through the disguise straight away. Okay. To Barry, love, sooty, sweep and sue. Hey? Eh? It's not really sooty, sweep and sue. Are you sure? They were in disguise. Let's have a look. Hey, have a look. <sighs> bye bye, everybody. Back to the studio. Barry! One of the most difficult hobbies to master is putting a ship in the bottle. It can take people many, many years to master this technique. In fact, it took me nearly all last Sunday afternoon. Barry, the bottle, please. Here we are. <laughs> What's that? I couldn't get a glass one. Oh, heck. He's thinking. I know. He knows. Go down to the glassworks and get another bottle. Right. That's it. Right. As soon as my assistant gets back with the bottle, we'll be able to show you how to put the ship into the bottle. That's as soon as he gets back. Barry, hurry up. I'm coming as fast as I can. <laughs> oh. Thank goodness for that. I thought you'd broken it. Just my little joke. Oh, we'll give it here. Oh, how? Oh, it's still hot. I know, I just got it from the glassworks. Oh, why didn't you say something? I did. You didn't. I did, I said ow. Well, I didn't mean that, I meant... Oh, oh, hold it, hold it. Uh, well, I'm sorry about that. Now we've got the bottle, all there's left to do is to put the ship into the bottle. Ship? Yes, yeah, ship. You won't be wanting the sheep then. There is nothing nicer than a fully rigged pirate ship in a bottle. And here is a model I made earlier. Look at that. A model of the most feared pirate ship ever to sail the Spanish main. Where's the Spanish main? On the neck of a Spanish horse. Oh. Now, all we have to do now is to put the ship into the bottle. Good. Right, put it in that way first. Oh, no. Try it from it, the top. Uh, it won't fit. Um. Well... I seem to have made a slight miscalculation in my measurement. What am I going to do? Don't worry, I've got another model. Oh, great. Go and get it. I'll go and get it. Well, I do apologise about this. It's most unlike us here at Chuckle Vision to make a mistake. I've got it. Oh, great. Bring it on. Here is another model of the most famous feared pirate ship ever to sail the Spanish main. Sheep. Sheep? Pirate sheep. Unfortunately, that's all we've got time for this week. So until next week, goodbye. Bye. How am I supposed to get that in a bottle? It's far too big. Well, the sheep's made out of wool, isn't it? So? Well, wool shrinks if you wash it. So? Hey, I knew I'd think of something. Yeah. <laughs> hey, it's very fierce little sheep, isn't it? It is fierce. I like this eye patch. Nice, <laughs> I really enjoyed today's show, Paul. It was good, wasn't it? Mind you, I don't think I'm really cut out for making things and things like no, that. No, I don't think you are, actually. Not like me. No. I prefer reading myself. Oh, what kind of books do you read? Adventure stories. Oh, yeah. I've just finished a book, you know. Have you? Yeah, I'm going to write another one this afternoon. Oh. Trouble with reading, it's bad for your health. Is it? It can be very dangerous. How do you make that out? See what I mean? Ch -ch 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 -ch